Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Today we're going to look at one of the most bizarre, disturbing <laughs> turntables I have ever come across. A true mystery. And as I open the box, incredible surprises. So stay tuned for that. But if you stay tuned to the end of the show, we are announcing a major thing we've been working on. Huge. It's going to be awesome. Very, very awesome. A major channel announcement at the end of the show. So stay tuned to the outro for that. You are definitely not going to want to miss that because that change is going to begin very, very soon. I want you to get an opportunity to know about it immediately. Welcome to Wreckitology! Behold, one of the weirdest looking record players I have ever come across. I found this today at a thrift store and I thought to myself, we have to look, we have to look at this. We have to look at this. So guessing by the technology shown here, <laughs> by the way, this is the Ion ILP. I have, this is the first time I think we've ever reviewed an Ion product. We did see them at CES, but we've never reviewed any of their turntables. And I know they're fairly prolific in the entry level market. So I thought, hey, we need to take a look at something Ion. I'm a little sketched out by what appears to be a Chuo Denshi clone ceramic. Hopefully that's not the case, but we'll dig into it a little bit. But I'm mostly concerned about the fact that this thing has an iPad docked on the side of it. So what in the heck is this? Well, this is one of those turntable conversion systems that's designed not as much for listening to vinyl, but as transferring your music from record to digital audio. Now, you may, if you're familiar with the iOS ecosystem, you may be saying, well, this is impossible. You can't just load MP3s onto an iPad. Well, these guys actually found a way to do that, which I'm going to explain here in a minute, and which is part of what makes this so bizarre. But this turntable is part of a whole sort of sub-genre of turntables that are out there where they're designed to convert analog to digital. Why would you want to do that? I get it for archiving. You know, there's certain music that's only available on vinyl. You can also use your iPhone or your iPod Touch and just dock it in there. I'm sure that's the old, you know, 32 pin Apple connection on there. All sort of, you know, features it has. It comes with software if you want to connect it to your LP, but it claim or to, to connect it to your computer. This claims to be able to rip music from vinyl straight to your iOS device. How in the heck can it do that? Judging by appearances, I would guess that this is approximately, gosh, 2012, 2013-ish. I looked on, this is obviously used, it was at a thrift store, but I looked on Ion's website and they still have it listed. Like they forgot to take it off. Meanwhile, I'm gonna try to get into this thing. Um, there's some listed used online in the neighborhood of like 60 to $100 still, which surprised me. Maybe this person bought this, converted all their vinyl to digital, and then, you know, donated it to the thrift store. I have no idea, but <laughs> so bizarre. Okay, so what do we got here? So we've got an old school USB-A cord, I believe that is. We used to think of these as the printer cords for the USB printer cords. And we got some packaging material of some sort. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and completely remove the lid. The ions are famous for this curved lid. And being as it's highly reflective, I'm gonna take that off just for the purposes of our review. Okay, so here is what we're left with. It is got a decent weight to it. There's a plastic plinth. I have to fix this needle sitting there, needle down. And they assured me, oh, don't worry, our, our experts here at the thrift store have reviewed everything and ensured its performance. Yeah, I don't think so. So <laughs> considering by the things that were just loosely in the bottom of that box, I don't think anybody touched it. So yeah, it's a pretty, big turntable. The platter is small. It's that same mechanism that we see in all the suitcase players and all-in-ones. We're not going to talk about this over here for quite yet. Let's talk about the turntable itself. Let's take a closer look down this region. 
The finish of the plinth is sort of a gloss black. You can see the reflection of the head shell area there. We have one of these small platters here, and you'll notice the rubber nubs are not there. They're missing. In fact, there's little holes where those normally would be snapped into. Instead, they give us a little felt slip mat there, so a touch of luxury. We've got a 45 adapter sitting on a peg right here. Boy, that is like a mirror surface. Pretty much just like the LP7, right? No, I don't think so. Not quite like that, right? <laughs> Let's take a look down in this area and see what we got. Okay, so apparently this is a three-speed turntable. We've got all three common speeds and auto start and stop. So this is literally like a suitcase player, but they've done something with the tone arm to kind of give it the appearance of a higher end turntable. The first thing we're gonna find out is whether or not this counterbalance is real or not. Nope. <laughs> well, it may be real, but it's not adjustable. That's funny. Actually, it's sad, but it is what it is. Let's zoom in a little bit there. You can see these numbers on here, completely fake. You can't adjust it whatsoever. It's set to one. I don't know what that's supposed to represent, one gram. Uh, anybody that knows a ceramic cartridge takes five to six grams to operate. So even if you could adjust it, you couldn't really go lower than five or six grams or it would actually damage your record for being, you know, under pressured. We've got a typical lift mechanism with a little shelf right there so you can raise and lower. Still has some damping fluid in there, which is surprising. It's not even rubber edged on that little shelf there. Super cheap, super, super cheap. When you record skip, by the way, with these types of mechanisms, just make sure you push down on this little lift shelf thing. That fixes about 80 to 90% of those problems. Um, yeah, this is just pretty loose. It doesn't seem like there's much of a gimbal in there. It's, it's so, everything is so decorative. Yeah, and I'm just about positive that is merely a ceramic cartridge because I can tell you right now, the shell, look at that, it's just loose. The whole thing, not just the head shells going back and forth. Okay, so yep, yes indeed, it is merely a ceramic Chuodenshi clone, which isn't terrible in and of itself, but that is the, that is the bottom of the barrel cartridge. Uh, so it won't require a preamp. That's why they do that. They're cheaper to make and they don't require the preamp circuit. You can see the stylus is red tipped, so no doubt that is a ruby sapphire type of stylus. And you can't just put a magnetic on here. I mean, I suppose you could if you wired it, but you would need that preamp circuit. And this is not adjustable. It's got fake slots where screws would go if it was an adjustable head shell. Completely, completely fake. Yeah, kind of disappointing, but not surprising. All right, on the back, we have the ION ILP logo. We also have the audio output jacks, the USB connection, 12 volt power supply, the on and off button. I have a problem where I call everything a switch. That is a button, not a switch. There are the clips for the dust cover. Those are akin to something you'd see on a higher end unit, but that's the least of our concern. The foot is weird. It's like this kind of gray painted plastic, pretty brittle plastic with a foam rubber pad. Underneath, I'm actually surprised to see what are labeled as adjustment pots for 33 and 45, I don't know if they work, but they are at least identified down there. Also, let's see if we can find a date code on this. I am guessing this is December of 2007, which would make sense. I think that would be a, an accurate guess right there. And look at this. Whoever had it, never they never took this off. I'm going to do that. Okay, just like new. Just like new. And there's another look at those trim pots with rubber caps. Not only for 33 and 45, but they actually have one for 78, which is pretty rare. Sometimes you have to get down to the motor in order to do that, even if it's a three speed. But by far the most troubling aspect of this so far disappointing and bizarro turntable is this right here. This is the dock for an old school Apple device, either an iPad or an iPod Touch or an iPhone. Do I have any devices with this? I absolutely do. In fact, it's right here. This is a first generation iPod Touch. Flip it over here and look at the back. You can see that the case was designed for future releases that would include a camera. This one does not, it's eight gigs. It is very bare bones. What I'm, Actually, a little bit intrigued about this device is, do you think 
that it will charge old iOS devices or is it audio connection only? So I'm just going to snap this guy on like that and see if anything lights up, indicates there's any sort of charge happening. Okay, that's been plugged in now for about five minutes and there's no indication whatsoever that anything works at all. By the way, this light that you see down here is not the device, it's reflecting off of something else. However, the unit itself has power, as you can tell, so I thought while we're giving that charging or connection mechanism time to come to life, I thought we would test the speed with a good old strobe disc. So let's start out at 33. We'll be looking at these inner three lines initially at the small for 33, then the middle for 45, and then the inner for 78. Let's get a little closer. And I'm going to lift the Q lever. Wow, this tone arm is about two inches over the record. <laughs> that can't be good. Okay, so we are at 33 RPM, which is right here and it's moving to the left that means it is not correct it is off the speed is off that's fairly considerable too i'm going to go to 45 next so that next ring above the last same problem still fast and finally 78 is probably gonna be the same yep no big surprise so this thing is way off on speed going back to 33 now and shutting it off no big surprise here. So I wouldn't rush out and grab one of these at this point. By the way, what did I pay for this? This is about 36 bucks, I think. This worth the price of admission just to play with it and see what it's all about. Still nothing on the iPod Touch. I might stick my iPad on there, which looks even more ridiculous. Okay, so I've got the old iPad 2 on there. I can't imagine it can support the weight. I mean, I can't, I can't believe it can. It's got that little kickstand in the back, but... It's a miracle with like 32 pins that these connections worked as good as they did. You can really see why Apple moved off of them. I got nothing whatsoever off of this. So either the device is dead, which is possible, or that connection is merely for recording. So how in the heck do you record? If you remember iOS devices, especially in 2007, were not about to let you in any sort of way load any content onto them except through iTunes. There was no way, you couldn't, it wasn't a free access file system like a thumb drive, kind of like it is now where you can, you know, load some stuff in, pull some stuff out. No, you couldn't do that. It didn't work, you could, especially you couldn't pull anything off of it. So what in the world, how did this work? It all comes down to an app because as it turns out, Ion had a special app that allows you to interface using this turntable and record audio onto it. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's working anymore. In fact, the reviews of this app, which is still out there, say that it's been dead for over two years. It doesn't look like the developers, you know, doing anything with it anymore. Not a huge surprise. I doubt there's a lot of people out there wanting that app at this point. This has got to be one of the most kludgy workaround ways to do digital audio that I've ever seen in my life, but $10 they're charging for this app in the iOS store today. $10, $10, you guys. Can you believe it? That's ridiculous. Okay, so let's uh, let's do a sound test. Let's play some music on this. We're gonna do a direct feed, so I'm gonna connect to the back. By the way, I don't think this probably came with the device, but originally I should say, but some nice Rocketfish audio cords in here. I'm gonna hold on to these for sure. I don't know about the turntable, but that's a good chord. I like that chord. But I'm going to be using my trusty Redicus digital audio device using the line input connectivity to the TF card. It is going to be an MP3 file 128K, so it is compressed right out of the box. Although you're watching on YouTube, which recompresses everything anyway. All that to say, it's not lossless. But for this turntable, I don't think it'll matter. So let me get it connected and we'll do a direct feed sound test. But first, just for grins, let's go ahead and check the tracking for us on this bad boy. We're gonna go ahead and let it descend onto the scale. Eh, four and a half, actually that's not bad, but I suspect that this is still holding it up a bit. Not by much. Actually, that lowered pretty good. So four and a half grams, that's actually on the light end 
of proper tone arm pressure, stylus pressure for this cartridge, which is surprising. Four and a half to five and a half, up to six grams is kind of the range for this. So it shouldn't damage anything, which is a good sign because I'm gonna be playing some of Emil's telegraphic transmission device. I'm glad it won't be damaging that record, at least not due to weight, possibly due to misalignment. But let's go ahead and give it a go, guys. I'm actually surprised that this cartridge is in decent enough alignment to play because it looks like it's tilted up. But alas, it begins its long and slow two inch descent and it works. All right, guys, that sounded terrible. One of the worst bar none that we have ever reviewed, ever looked at on this channel. I suspect even when it was new that it sucked even back then because that was really bad. That was just bad. That was just bad. And it's got no place in today's world because for $60 to $99 used, you could get yourself a nice Audio Technica, you know, with a magnetic cartridge. You get a nice Crosley entry level with a magnetic cartridge that would be infinitely better. So, no, there's not gonna be any links for you for this device. If you want one, I would just say, why, okay? Other than a strange curiosity, maybe Peter would want it for his collection. He's got some oddities. I'm always telling him he needs to just open a museum at this point, because he's got so many cool and weird things. This is a strange footnote in the history of turntables. Now, thank you for staying tuned to the end of the show. You shall be rewarded because Here's our huge announcement, you guys. Beginning very, very soon, possibly by the time you're watching this video, if not, it will be in the next couple of days, we are going to be rolling out memberships on this channel, which is fantastic news for you. Why is it fantastic? Because you're gonna get an extra show. Remember everybody was like, oh man, I wish you guys did more shows. We'd like to see a third show, because right now we're just doing the two shows. Want a third show. Well, if you become a member for the low, low price of $3.99 a month, which is like a Starbucks, it's one coffee, and coffee is not that good for you anyway. But for that small cost, you can become a part of the Recordology Vinyl Nation. That's what we're calling it. And as a member of that, you get exclusive badges, and we're gonna have icons in there for you. You get an exclusive members only, only for the Vinyl Nation show, on Fridays. It's going to be our third show, but you have to be a member of the Vinyl Nation in order to watch that show. Those shows will never be made available on the regular channel stream. So you only can see those shows and they're going to be cool. We're going to make them extra cool just to tantalize you a little bit. Now, if you choose not to or cannot become a member, you guys are awesome, regardless of whether or not you join the Vinyl Nation and you won't lose out on anything because we're still going to do the two shows a week. We're still going to do, you know, stuff posted to the community tab and things of that nature. But if you join the club, as it were, if you join the Recordology Vinyl Nation, you get that third show. But that's not all. But wait, that's not all. You also get to join in an exclusive live members only chats. That means that on our live shows going forward, the only people that will be able to chat are going to be members of the Recordology Vinyl Nation. Now, people can still super chat in if they want to and they don't want to pay an ongoing membership. But if you are in that nation, if you are in the Recordology Vinyl Nation, you will be able to access those exclusive live chats of which we're gonna start doing more. I, I don't know the exact number of the lives yet. I wanna do as much as possible. But those are the introductory features. We only have one tier right now. It's that Recordology Vinyl Nation members only option. And look down below for details on how it's gonna work again. As of the publication of this date, we're still waiting on YouTube, Google approval, but we expect that in the next 24 hours or so. So by the time you watch this video, it's very likely that it's already rolled out. If not, come back, we'll let you know when it goes live, but that's gonna be fun. We're gonna have some cool, exclusive content. You can earn badges, and the badges change color. They look like little 45 adapters. Those badges change color 
depending on how long you've been a member. So every month you get upgraded to the next level color, which is really, really cool. Now, depending on the success of this program, we may roll out additional benefits down the road as well, but we'll see. So anyway, guys, most of all, I love you guys and I'm thankful for you. Thank you for watching this show. Check out our upcoming membership exclusive program, the Recordology Vinyl Nation, very shortly. But that's going to do it for now, guys. Happy record hunting. We'll see you next time.